All right, beer nerds and brewery lovers, we need to have a serious chat this week. I know I like to keep the topics on this channel pretty light and positive, but I have found some beer-related numbers this week, and frankly, I am a little disgusted with you people. Look, I know theft is a pretty common thing, but the sheer amount of glassware that gets pilfered from bars and breweries every year is a little bit astounding. And after doing some research on this topic on Google, I'm a little surprised at how many people are genuinely astounded that taking things from breweries and bars is illegal. Hey, this is Ryan with Beer by the Numbers, and today we're going to talk about the old five finger discount and how it impacts bars and breweries. And also, what, if anything, displeased business owners are doing to combat theft from their guests. If you do a quick Google search about stealing from bars, not only are there people asking in forums whether or not it's okay to steal from a bar, but there are actual articles and news agencies writing about glassware theft all over. GQ wrote a great sarcastic article to help its readers figure out if your unethical behavior is justified. With rules like, if you're over 25, you're too old to be a degenerate, or if you're stealing other things from the bar too, you should probably just lay off taking things altogether. This article is a pretty funny one and worth the read. And then there are some strange questions like this one from the Corvette forum where a guy brags about building up a sweet collection of beer glasses, stealing them from bars, and asking if they can get caught and arrested for stealing a glass from a bar. They kind of justify it by saying they tip above 25%, but still, this is just a weird question, and of course you can get arrested for stealing. The internet responds in its typically sarcastic manner, advocating just walking behind the bar and grabbing all the glasses you want. But one user seemed to get really upset, as it seems they were some sort of bar owner or manager. They mentioned they fire some of their staff who give things away or tolerate theft, and call the original poster a thief. And you know what? I don't blame you for thinking something like, you know, hey, they have a million glasses, they won't miss one. Or, you know, maybe they get them all super cheap or for free, so what does it matter? Well, I would implore you to talk to Philly Mays, owner of the Bruges Beer Wall Cafe. They are a very popular bar in the tourist town of Bruges, Belgium. And Mays says every year, this one single bar loses at least 4,000 glasses. 4,000 from one bar. And these aren't just cheapo shaker pints that are popular here in the U.S. Oh no, these are quality specialized beer glasses shaped to enhance the flavor and aroma of the beer poured into them. The prices on these glasses, even in the bulk bar buying range, go from two to eight euros. That means every year, this one bar loses about 15,000 euros worth of, of glassware. Look, being in a popular bar can be very profitable, but beer is not a high margin business. Bars and breweries don't need drinkers piling on extra costs by stealing thousands of dollars of glassware every year. And not only does this mean a lot of missing glassware, but it also drives up beer prices for drinkers because these businesses have to drive up prices to recoup those losses. Or if you're like the Bruges Beer Wall Cafe, you invest in a 4,000 euro alarm system that beeps if any glasses make their way out of the bar in a bag or jacket. And it seems that more bars in Europe and the US are investing in such inventory control systems. Coming soon to a bar near you, an airport security checkpoint. But it's not just glassware, Vice did a great article on the craziest things stolen from bars and breweries. David and Tim run their own bar in California, but they decorated their entire bar in items they had stolen from other places. For example, they stole a giant Chinese folding fan by folding it up and shoving it down one of their pant legs. Another time, they stole a chair by draping all of their jackets over it and sneaking it by an unsuspecting bouncer. They say oftentimes, bouncers don't expect you to steal large items, and then they don't even notice you doing it. They have apparently never been caught while stealing things from bars. 
One group of friends decided that only stolen Christmas decorations could be put up in their apartment as a joke. So they all began stealing various items from pubs and restaurants, turning the season of giving into a season of taking. Another group of housemates decided to supplement their thin budgets by sourcing all of their toilet paper by stealing it from bars and restaurants. They knew exactly which bars and cafes had huge rolls of paper, and if they could score a whole bulk package at once, that was their jackpot. They said they would carry around extra plastic bags for the express purpose of stealing from local taverns. So to all you brewery owners and pubs out there, be careful. Apparently there are plenty of people out there nicking everything in sight that isn't nailed down. Have you ever acquired anything from a bar or pub? If you let me know down in the comments section below, I promise I won't tell anyone. And while you're down there, why not check out the link to the Beer by the Numbers podcast page. There I deliver some longer form audio pieces on beers and interviews with great people in the beer and brewing community. If you like the videos on this channel, I know you're going to love that podcast. Once again, this has been Ryan with Beer by the Numbers, and I'll see you next week with more suspiciously acquired beer content.